says it's number one. Others are cheaper because they don't have the trim clad formula. But what kind of paint is it? Only trim clad makes trim clad. Someone tries to tell you otherwise, buy your rust paint somewhere else. with Harry Neal in the broadcast booth. Ron McLean, Don Cherry, and Chris Cuthbert, our Hockey Night in Canada crew at the Northlands Coliseum, where there's a sellout crowd of 17,503, and the two coaches sweating this one out. A minute 14, left in the third period, the Bruins leading 2-1. to one. Well, if you want to see the trustees, the guys the coaches trust the most, out there now, defensively and offensively, and you can see that Bill Ransford running for the quick exit to the bench to give the Oilers the six skater. He's 15 feet out of the net, and if Edmund can, can win the face off and dump it in, of course, they get possession. Ransford will go very quickly, and they'll get the extra man on. Let's see what happens. 1-14 remaining. The Bruins fighting to get back into the Stanley Cup final series. And it'll afford to lose this one tonight. Down 2 nothing in games. But loose their center. Bruins stay out of it. Here comes Messier. And he can't reach it. Both goes out of the net. Nice they play. keep it in. Bruins clear it. Neely takes it. Took all kinds of time to move it. Ramford still in the net. 50 seconds remaining. Tegan and dumped it in. Now Ramford is starting toward the bench. There he goes. Water put on the extra man. Anderson hopping over the boards. And a puck going off. Bowles over the glass into the crowd. That will bring about a face-off deep in the Boston zone. And with the Edmonton net empty, the Oilers will have that extra man with 35 seconds left. The Boston Bruins players, when the puck was in the neutral zone or just inside their blue line, no one would skate with it. They all wanted to hit it somewhere. And there was some skating room. And they ended up giving it away. There's Brantford on the bench. 35 seconds to go. The Oilers have dominated the faceoff. Will they dominate this one? They've had 14 shots in the period, compared to two by the Boston Bruins. And they have the only goal of the period, a power play goal by Esther Tegan in at 5.54. And it's 2-1 Boston. Into the final minute of the third period. 35 seconds. Now, 30 seconds. As Bork cuts it on the boards and gets it out. 25 seconds. Tegan doesn't have much time. Neely for checking. 20 seconds. Smith trying to move it. The crowd trying to rush him up a bit. To center, Curry brings it in. 15 seconds. Smith in. Can't get a shot on the net. 10 seconds. Bruce trying to hang on. And I think they're going to. Here's a long shot. Doesn't get very far. Bruce have won this game. And they're back in the series. Hanging on for dear life. Here in the third. And winning it. 2-1. to one. Well, not all wins have to be things of beauty. And this was one of the ugliest wins the Boston Bruins have had this season. They hung on for 25 minutes, gave up all kinds of chances and got very few, but Andy Moe stuck it in the ear of his old teammates tonight with a superlative performance, and we will have game five in Boston at the least. Edmonton outshot Boston 14 to two. In the third period, the shot totals over three periods, 29-22, in favor of the Edmonton Oilers. Andy Moe gets his first career win in the playoffs for the Boston Bruins. And a bigger one he could not have come up with. Only scoring play in the third period. Esatikin in a power play from Curry. Smith. That was back at 554. The Oilers kept pouring everything they could. And and they the Bruins, but they came up short. Nice for the the final score, Boston 2. The Edmonton Oilers 1. So the Bruins are back in the series. After Edmonton's 
swept the first two at Boston. They've got a new series now. Let's now go to Chris Custer. Thank you, Bob. Randy Burridge has joined me just outside the Boston Bruin room. What a turnaround from uh, the first two games of Boston. Oh, big win for us. Big win. Uh, you know, we played a good, solid game out there. We're shutting them down pretty well right till the end. Uh, we, we started to choke up a little bit, but we held on, and uh, Andy moved him up some big saves for us. And you had a couple of youngsters play great roles. Thank you, Randy. John Weiss, come on in. John, 10 seconds. You didn't waste any time tonight, John, to score the first goal that really set the Bruins going. Oh, it was unbelievable, you know. Uh, I, didn't ex I didn't expect to get the start there. And with Cam and Cam Neal and Craig Janney, you know, you can't go wrong with those two. And then Cam, you know, drove the puck wide, got a good shot on that. I just went to the went to the cage and it popped right out to me, and I had a kind of an open net for the rebound. You're turning into a clutch performer for the Bruins because you scored in Game Seven against Hartford. I don't know. I think a little luck's following me right now, but um, I can't complain. What's it like uh, playing in a Stanley Cup final? I don't think you've played a regular season game. You came right over from uh, the University of Wisconsin, and here you are in the middle of a Stanley Cup final. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It really hasn't sank in, you know, after the NCAAs and coming to play in the Stanley Cup. It's just kind of been a dream season for me. John, congratulations on a big goal and a big win. Thank you. John Bice of the Boston Bruins, and they'll be going back to Boston for at least a game five. Stay tuned for more on Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. When the engineers at Nissan...